Hello and welcome to the Friday, May 5th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier found a Word document that uses an interesting trick to get users to start a malicious executable. Most of the time when you're dealing with malicious Word documents, you're dealing with macros. But of course, these days, enabling macros isn't really all that easy. So attackers are looking for other ways to actually launch malicious payloads. And we have seen a lot like with OneNote documents and the like, uh, some tricks here to bypass some of these newer restrictions. What Xavier found is actually quite simple and appears to be doing the trick here to trick the user into launching malicious code without giving them any warning. This particular Word document has just a straightforward Windows executable enabled and then ask the user to double click on the embedded executable to launch it. Now, of course, this is not what the Word document says here. The Word document does display sort of a small thumbnail image, which is really the application icon that looks like, yeah, could be an invoice but really too small to see and then it has a text telling the user hey uh, this is really too small here because it was created with a newer version of word but by double clicking on this thumbnail you'll actually get the full size version what you actually do when double clicking is then launch the embedded executable the .NET executable turned out to be an info stealer. It collects data from the infected host and then exfiltrates them via email. Xavier was able to extract the email configuration and posted it as part of the write-up. The mail server happens to be in Saudi Arabia, mail.tcci.org.sa. And Cisco released a bulletin regarding a critical vulnerability in the Cisco SPA112 two-port phone adapter. These are these little boxes that allow you to take uh, regular good old phones and convert them into voice over IP phones. However, this particular device, the SPA112, hasn't been for sale for about three years. The vulnerability is a missing authentication as firmware upgrades are processed. So an attacker could essentially install malicious firmware on the device, which of course equates to arbitrary code execution and the device like this could then probably be, for example, be abused for eavesdropping and the like, or as a little sort of attack platform to attack the rest of the network. Now, these devices have very limited computing power, so not 100% sure how much you could actually do with it, which is probably why they are no longer being sold. No update available due to the end of life situation here, and the customers are advised to take the e-waste upgrade route, which basically means throw out your old SPA 112 and buy whatever Cisco is selling now instead. And Fortinet this week patched nine vulnerabilities across its product portfolio. Two of these vulnerabilities received a rating of high. One affects 40 ADC and it's a command injection vulnerability. However, it does require authentication. The second vulnerability also requiring authentication in 40 OS and 40 proxy is an out of bound write in the SSL VPN daemon that could also be leading to remote code execution. So, all of these vulnerabilities do require authentication, which makes them not critical, but only high. There are a couple other sort of interesting vulnerabilities here with a lower rating, some uh, cross-site scripting that sounds possibly interesting. It's of a stored cross-site scripting that could trigger remote code execution via license key forgery. So some of this may be of interest to a little bit more creative attacker. Definitely apply these updates quickly. Let me have some 
Bad news for users of the print management software PaperCut. Uh, PaperCut suffered from a vulnerability that has already been exploited. I think I talked a couple times about this in the past. Now, there have been uh, some widely used sort of detection uh, rules out there to detect exploitation of PaperCut. Jacob Baines with Wolncheck now published a new approach to exploit this vulnerability that is not detected by current detection rules. So if you're running PaperCut, you better already are updated given the active exploitation of that tool. And you may want to double check the blog post to see if you see any evidence of this new exploit method for this known vulnerability. Well, that's it for today. Thanks and for listening. Thanks to everybody who is giving me the five stars and is leaving comments in various podcast platforms. And talk to you again on Monday. Bye.